DJs have got a big range of tractors. Yes, we do. We uh, Massey Ferguson, uh, Fent, Izeki, uh, Challenger. We also do Manitou Tally Handlers and Laylee um, Hay Equipment. There's a lot of things for somebody to learn. Oh, we cover the field, yeah. Do tell me about them because they've come a long way since the Massey Ferguson that, well, Massey Ferguson's 35, in fact, that I learned to drive on. Yeah, the Massey Ferguson we've got behind us is a 6612. They come out from the factory loader ready. Uh, all the controls for your um, transmission are on the um, handle for your loader, so you can go forward, reverse, all through your gears. They have come a long way. And the little ones? Yeah, the wee Izeki here, that's actually going up near one station. Um, it gets quite cold up there and they wanted a, a cab and something very simple to use and that's the best they could find on the market. The range, I guess, that you sit down with a client and work out their needs and then sort out a tractor that's going to fulfil them. Yeah, we, we cover from everything from 30 horsepower to 400 or we can go bigger if you get into the Challenger but no, we seem to have a tractor for most needs. And of course, Massey Ferguson has been around for years. Yes, have. We've been, uh, JJ's have been with Massey for 56 years and uh, we're the longest serving Massey dealer in New Zealand. But it's sort of like sitting in a car, really. Yeah, I had you in one before. It is. It's as easy as driving a car. So all your hydraulics, they're all very, very simple. So any fool can drive one of these things. Yeah, dead right. I, I can drive one, so yes, yeah, <laughs> well, everyone else can. <laughs> I reckon I'm in with the chance as well, actually, Pete. <laughs> yeah, no, no, they're very simple to use and very easy to drive. Um, very fuel efficient, that's one thing. They've got the Sisu or Agco power engine in them now, which um, comes from the Veltra range, the masses, and uh, incredibly good engine. And I guess you've got computers to let you know anything like wheel slip? Yeah, it tells you on the dash what your wheel slip is, um, your fuel economy. You can even get headland management, so it tells you how much of the paddock you've done and how, ma how many litres per hectare, etc. Now, you've got your basic models, and then you can also get very, very sophisticated if somebody wants that sort of thing. Oh, well, you can. Like, you know, the sky's the limit. You know, we can have auto steer, self steer, um, precision down to two centimetres, um, hands off the steering wheel. And Ray, you've got a fleet of JJ front end loaders. We've had these telehandlers now, Rob, for quite some time. It's a very important part of our business is to have telehandlers like these ones. Uh, we actually use them a lot in the field. We're actually quite a large and busy uh, irrigation company here in Ashburton. Uh, we, we've got various spanning guys who assemble irrigators in the field, and we need these types of systems we've got here to make the guy's job a lot more easier in the field, moving stuff around in the paddocks. It's fine in a day like this when the sun is shining and it's nice and dry, but in the wintertime, of course, it can get quite wet, quite boggy and things like that also. I've got to bear that in mind. These being four-wheel drive, a pivot steer and things like that makes our job, job a lot, lot easier, for sure. I guess time is money as far as you are concerned, as well as your client, of course. Very much so, Rob, yes. Uh, we've had a number of these types of systems in the past. We decided to go down the Manitou track uh, about two or three years ago now. We've now got three of these in the fleet. Uh, we're very happy with the service that JJ's and Ashburton have provided. Uh, the, the quality of the product itself is very, very good. We've looked at other brands, uh, but we believe that these are still the best by a long shot at this point in time. And the crew likes them? Very much so. They've got all the mod cons. They've even got heated seats, dare I say it, Rob. Not that that's completely necessary, of course, <laughs> but for some reason the guys like heated seats, air conditioning, radios and everything like that. But everything is, is at, the, at the fingertips, from the controls, and this is the important thing. Uh, they're safe, they're reliable to use, which makes life a lot easier for everyone. Does it take very long to learn how to operate one? No, certainly not. They're user-friendly, very much user-friendly. We've got a number of guys, but we've got key people who drive the machines because that's their job to look after all of the other gear on site and so on, and the staff. And with health and safety, you've got to be very conscious of what, how we do things in the field. Gavin, it doesn't have a cab, but you love it anyway. Yeah, it's, it's a tractor that's uh, basically uh, easy to get on and off. Uh, we've, we find that its uh, visibility is great from it. So a lot of what we do, we don't need the cab because we're shifting irrigators. So as a result, we don't need um, a flash cab to sit in. So uh, it's, it's pretty much what we wanted for the job. You've still got all your bells and whistles on it. Oh yeah, yeah. This uh, for us is a pretty a, a new uh, transmission. Uh, it's very easy to operate. Um, the beauty of it is, is you've got a shuttle control that you don't have to worry about clutching. And when you're unloading hay bales or moving tractors, uh, moving irrigators, it's very, very easy to just shuttle back and forth. Now I understand that you're pretty impressed with the size of the front wheels. Yeah, yeah. A big part of why we brought the tractor in the first place was because of this ride. Um, we've had tractors over the years of various makes and models, but the wheels uh, basically dictate what sort of ride you get across the paddock. And on this property, it's nice and flat. 
there's no real ruts or anything like that from pivots. So uh, yeah, it's like driving a car. To the point that your father uses it and he's no spring chicken. No, he's 82. Um, and one of the reasons we looked at this tractor was the fact that it was very, very easy to get on and off. Um, the step, bottom step was very easy to step onto. The handhelds were in the right place and it's just a, a natural progression to just slide into the seat. And as far as the power is concerned and all the attachments, you're pretty happy with that? Oh yeah, yeah. you've got to have power to do the job. The four wheel drive makes a big difference. Um, this property here, we can pull a 10 tonne roller with that piece of equipment. Uh, we can do everything we like with it. We've got larger tractors. We've got a larger 100 horsepower Massey as well with a cab. It's like riding in a car. Um, it's actually in some respects too flash inside. You're just too scared to get it dirty. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's new equipment, it's new technology and it's right up there. Gavin, you've seen a lot of changes in your time as a farmer. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, go from the old Armstrong steering to the live drive PDOs. This thing's just push button. It's a piece of cake to drive. And so from a fairly small unit to a fairly large one, what are you actually doing here? Crop, cropping, it's a cropping farm. And in the winter we graze dairy cattle. Um, and really it's, it's about as simple as it gets here. Yeah. How, how big is the, the area? This block here is 210 hectares. And even it grows a, a crop of something from carrots to um, clover, wheat, barley, uh, grass seed. So you really got a tractor for every purpose? Uh, the middle one does uh, dr all the drilling and fertiliser spreading. The, the bigger one does the ploughing and the cultivating. And the lighter tractor does carts of straw and feeds, feeds out in the winter and does some cultivating as well because it's big enough to do that. Indeed it is then, a tractor for every purpose. Yep, so the whole three are exactly the same to drive, no difference. An 81 year old drives a whole three of them and you'll spend eight hours in, the, in each one if he has to. He, um, I don't ask him to, he just comes and does it. So that's how easy it is for a fellow who um, mainly worked on a sheep station down south, which is named um, Ian Southern. He'll, he'll come out, he even drove one yesterday for half a day. So I guess it's the usual story, you buy the tractors and your staff and mates drive them because they enjoy doing it and you don't get a look in. Yeah, I get the sack, yeah. <laughs> no, no, um, we all, yeah, we all do a bit. I guess with a unit this big, there's a fair bit of tractor work to be done because no doubt you're a cropping and so you're turning the paddocks over. Yep, some, but twice a year, yeah. So, to Wakanui in very broad acre, tell me a bit about the property and what you're doing here. Uh, we're Wakanui and Pendarvest. So we're farming um, a thousand hectares between the two locations. I know there's not many fences, just cropping. Uh, all cropping here, we have got some fences out at Pendarvest, but uh, yeah, limited, we don't have that many. And it's four generations? Yep, uh, Stuart's my pop, uh, Greg, my father, myself and Max. Who's obviously a fent man. He's a fent man, yep, uh, hasn't had a choice so far. And I guess you're growing just about everything? Uh, yeah. Um, Growing everything, cropping, but also mainly uh, horticulture, vegetables, um, potatoes, onions, carrots, beetroot, and then all the wheat, barley, cereals, and small seeds. And you're very happy to stick with Fent? Uh, yep, yep, no, we've, uh, I'm not sure, we brought our first Fent in 2000, I think, and uh, from then uh, we've had a few buy and sell, but yeah, we've got 11 in operation at the moment. So what do you like about them? Uh, the Vero gearbox, that was the first um, probably um, sell and then from there uh, there's another few like the reverse steer we are using, uh, both these tractors have got reverse steer. What so does that mean? Uh, when we're harvesting our potatoes and onions with the GPS we turn the seat and the steering wheel round so we don't have to bend our neck all day. We just uh, look at the operation, we'll look at the harvester and uh, yeah it's a lot more comfortable for the operator. And so. The GPS actually drives it while you're watching the, the, the harvester? Yeah, so the GPS keeps it going in a straight line and you're watching the harvester, so you're not watching where you're going except for a mirror in the, in the cab. That would be quite weird, wouldn't it? Uh, it takes a bit to get used to, but after you're used to it, it's fine. It's quite good. Sooner have it than out it, yeah. Well, there, there was those who would suggest that it's the Rolls-Royce of tractors. Yeah, I think so. Like, uh, you get what you pay for 
and um, yeah, I think uh, they're fairly well specced. And um, like this tractor here has got 8,000 hours on it. Um, we've got um, another two with over 10,000 hours on. And touch wood, we haven't had um, any major problems with them. So you've obviously got a fair bit of faith in them. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, we've got a lot of faith in them. Uh, there are other brands out there that I don't think are going to last as long. So um, the Vario transmissions tested. Like we've got, we've got two machines that have got 12,000 hours on them, and uh, we're happy with it. So keep buying them. What about the grunt? Obviously, they've got a fair bit of it. Uh, yeah, yep, they um, they're good. They get the power to the ground. Um, most of it is all uh, um, tillage work. So um, the fuel efficiency is uh, pretty pretty good on them, and uh, that's yeah, we like, that's why we keep going with them.